So every year around this time, Samsung drops their flagship phones. This time around, we got a brand new lineup of the S24. So we're looking at S24 Plus, S24, S24 Ultra. In this video today, we're gonna to be talking about my process in switching from just a regular iPhone user or just regular iPhone in general, and my journey on switching over to a Samsung. I've used this phone for the better part of the last few days. I've been really trying to go through all of the apps and every single thing. It's just been a really nice, pleasant experience. And in this video, I'm gonna just basically show you why I think personally the S24 Plus in today is probably the best Android smartphone that your money can buy. Well, hello there, fancy seeing you here. Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's good to have you guys back on board. <clears throat> Honestly, I just wanna say thank you so much for the support on the channel recently. It's just been kind of crazy. Like I can't keep up it's just been really really nice and it's so heartwarming because i put a lot of work into these videos so seeing that you guys actually enjoy watching them and just the support overall it's just really really nice uh, by the way i know you guys may have seen this plaque here it's 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 not real it's it's not fucking real right <laughs> i made this when i was like 18 years old it's, it's not a real one but trust me it's gonna be replaced by a real one. I promise, I promise guys. 100K, let's go, let's get to it. Today, S24 Plus. I've been using this phone for the better part of the last few days. It is currently 10.50 AM. And at the time I'm making this video, I just wanna say that I wanna kinda update the channel a little bit. I'm really moving forward into like, just kinda being a little bit more creative, more artistic with my videos. I just wanna say, I wanna make a little bit more diverse content in a sense where I wanna incorporate more like, you know, different shots like this, or just, you know, just me kind of vlogging a little bit, incorporating, obviously I'm still gonna keep the whole tech. It's gonna be the main topic of the channel where I'm talking about all this stuff, but I kinda just wanna make it into just kinda like open video diary kind of stuff. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about with the S24 Plus is really the refresh on the design. I gotta be honest, I actually really like it. It's nothing crazy. I don't think it's the main, main new feature, new factor of the phone, but I gotta be honest, for the most part, it is a really nice refresh. So we're looking at a overall thinner body. So we're looking at a brand new screen that's actually really, really nice. It is super high quality. Now the screen has adjustable resolution, which is really nice. You can put it at 720p if you wanna kinda of preserve battery and just optimize your settings. You can put it at 1080p, which is kinda of like the mid-range, kinda of good in-between option. You can also put it at 1440p, which is the one I have, which is gonna give you the best viewing experience and the most amount of megapixels on your screen at once it is a little feature but i think it is kind of important to point out some people will actually use that you know if, um, I, I can kind of think in a realistic scenario if you were to put like maybe for example like a you know like a more of a techie a person that's kind of into technology they would use the 1440p the maxed out settings and all that stuff but for example if you were to give this phone for like i don't know you would buy this for your mom or whatever she probably wouldn't even notice the difference between the 1440p and the 1080p so you can put her phone at 1080p to kind of like optimize battery life and have her phone last most of the time i know my mom kind of just charges her phone every like two or three days she doesn't really use it that much so that would be a, a scenario where i would see it being a lot more optimized in that sense now still keeping on the topic of display, we're also looking at a smaller hole punch camera, which is really, really nice. I think it's nice. It, it adds a little bit of value to the overall screen. I will have to point out something though. It has been kind of brought to my attention throughout the whole time I've been experiencing kind of just testing with the phone and also just overall during this whole period of time where I've been testing the camera, it has been a little less quality so i do have to admit that that smaller hole punch camera has its perks it looks nicer on the screen okay it let takes up a lot less space but it is kind of losing a bit of quality now with that being said i'll also touch up on the cameras on the back end which i think are fantastic so those have really improved by a lot but to kind of wrap up on the smaller hole punch cutout it's just I don't know, it's it's nice because it's smaller, so it definitely looks better. The Face ID works equally as good as it used to be, if not a little bit faster. Now, with that being said, the back-end cameras of the phone are actually a lot better than the front-facing camera. It's clearly, obviously, the case. That's kind of a no-brainer, but the back-end cameras, the triple camera setup on the back is actually super solid. It's shot some really nice pictures. I actually got, I was able to shoot some really nice pictures. I also was able to shoot some really nice video. Now, we've had this with the previous lineup. We've had like 8K footage on the S23 Plus and S23 Ultra. Now, I'm not too sure how the quality was on those. I did test it out on the channel. If you guys want to see the videos, there'll be somewhere linked up. The point is, it was good, but then again, it is 8K that's shot on a phone. I do think that is a, it is a safer bet for smartphones to just have like a consistent regular 4K camera. I do like the fact that Samsung had, you know, first things first, the audacity, and second of all, they had kind of like the courage to put an 8K camera. So it does shoot really, really high quality content. But then again, most of us don't even have 8K TVs 
or 8K displays or 8K monitors for that matter. But a lot of the times, you know, most of us are kind of just in that sweet spot with the 4K. So I would have to say that it would have been a better option or just like a better implementation overall for Samsung to put a 4K. But then again, the 8K does perform well. So the only downside to it is that you're never really going to maximize that 8K. You're never going to really see every single bit of potential that the 8K footage has due to the simple fact that you do need an 8K display because you can shoot 8K, but if your display is 1080p, then you're never going to really see that difference. So it is quality though. I will not, I will not lie. It is very, very powerful. I'm outside in the wilderness right now, guys. I'm about to test the camera. So what I want to do is I just want to show you guys, first of all, just the camera. You can also have locations on your camera so if ever you were in a situation where you um you're moving you know cities or places often and you kind of want to have an update on that you can do so but um just kind of again want to give you guys like a camera quality i'm taking a picture here against the sun it, it I, I don't know i just i feel like the camera quality has also been improved a lot it is better than what it used to be but i do have to admit that for the most part it's still lacking in certain areas it's not perfect but it does retain a lot of information it is nice and accurate it's not too saturated so i definitely have to say that that's one good thing also guys this is a look at what the phone looks out like outside all right so what i'm going to do guys is you'll probably have the screen recording somewhere on the screen but i want to take a picture and i want to kind of look at it with you guys so this is what you're looking at this is my recording setup at the moment i'm just going to take a picture of this camera right here there we go. If we look at a little bit here at the overall set details, it does look really good. Now, I got to be honest with you guys, these type of pictures, so kind of like portrait style, are going to hold up a lot better. If we zoom in here, you'll definitely see a lot of clarity. You can definitely see the whole Sony logo. It is super clear over there. It is like retaining most of the information. If we zoom in all the way here, you can actually see a lot of the details on the texture on the side. So it definitely holds up a lot of information. It is good. It's in focus. This is my ND filter. So that's why you probably won't recognize the lens. And yeah, there you go. So you're holding up a lot of information. The background, I think, is very nice in terms of how it blurs out. So that's something that's kind of really nice. And I think that's good. You can even see some detail on the carpet there, also in the background. So it is pretty solid. I'm actually going to be taking a video outside as well. So this is what the video quality looks like this is against lighting and it actually holds up really really well so i think the overall camera quality is holding up a lot better on these new samsungs in terms of video quality the camera has definitely improved on that so if i turn over here you can see the second you start catching a bit of natural light it is definitely a lot more significant more powerful i'm going to actually try something here so you can see it has good depth of field so if i'm here and the background is not too blurred out but it is pretty solid and if i bring it up to my face it definitely auto focuses fast <laughs> as you guys can see all of my pores and everything but it is pretty solid i gotta be honest this is a solid camera for the better part of it so as i was saying the camera is really really good on this samsung i think it's really really nice i really like the fact that samsung has been keeping some sort of consistency with their overall camera quality throughout the last few iterations of the s24 or just the regular s20 lineup the s20 plus is definitely the best one in my opinion for example if you were to get the regular s24 i think it is a good option it's a good bet it's a good option but i don't necessarily think it's the best one due to the simple fact that it has a smaller body a smaller screen and also smaller battery and that's just personal opinion i think that's just personal preference if you like a regular smaller phone you don't really need all of that stuff it's great but this one is definitely the best in between it is the equivalent or the competitor to the 15 plus all do i do think in my personal opinion that the s24 plus is a little is not just a little but a lot better than the 15 plus i have to say that the main takeaway that i have personally noticed this year is i've seen a solid improvement in terms of video quality so the video has just really improved it's just a lot better not necessarily the 8k as i mentioned earlier that's just a specific kind of topic but the overall just uhd ultra hd content just you know raw 4k content from the actual phone is really really good it's just performing at high contrast high brightness high saturation it is nice it's sharp it looks accurate and it's really really good although i do think it still takes some fantastic pictures it does suffer a little bit in low light and that's kind of the one takeaway i have to say with this and it's also the same thing for the s24 ultra i will have had a video on that on the channel but yeah the overall camera it's good but like i said best best thing about it is definitely the video so now moving on to something that has been growing on me like 
every single day throughout the usage of this particular phone is the AI. Now, I got to be honest, guys, I really love the AI. I love what Samsung is doing with this. It is awesome. It's definitely the future. I cannot wait to see how they're going to up update their overall software and just give us better updates. It is working really good so far. So I got to be honest with you guys. I have nothing to complain about so far. It has been fantastic. Like I just... I found some myself so many times just being online, watching a YouTube video, or just being on Pinterest or on a, any of these platforms on socials, whatever, and I'll see something I like. For example, it's a product or it's like an item that I've been wanting or it's something that I want information about. The advanced search is so useful. It is so good. It just works like 99% of the time. It's only been like one or two times that I've noticed that hasn't been that performant or it hasn't really found exactly what I wanted, but it has also, but it still gave me something really close to what I searched. But I gotta be honest guys, most of the times, like you can just generally go on a YouTube video, find something that you like in the video, hold the home button, advanced search it and the ai is going to find it i gotta be honest with you guys it's been working so well and i've had no problem with it and that's just one of the features about it i can't wait to see what samsung is also going to implement i want to see them just kind of like work on this as much as possible and the great thing about it is that the whole s24 lineup has it so if you get an s24 plus or an s24 ultra or the s24 you're going to get it across the board and i think that's really good and that's one thing that just i gotta give it to samsung i gotta give them a shout out for this because they just they just do it properly every single time the experience whether you're using an s24 ultra or an s24 plus you're not really losing value you're not really downgrading too much you know as for example i'm gonna be completely honest with you guys if you're using the 15 Pro Max and then you go to the 15 Plus, you'll notice that difference. You'll you'll feel like you're going down. You'll feel like you're downgrading and it's just not all that pleasant. As for the S24 lineup, the Ultra is definitely the big powerhouse. It's fantastic. It's powerful. It's crazy. But if you decide to pick up the S24 Plus, for example, you need another phone or you just decided to switch phones or you want to get this one because it's more affordable than that one, which is very true. The S24 Plus is a lot more affordable you're not losing any value it is fantastic you still have a fantastic set of three cameras that are super performance shoot great videos you are getting a beautiful display a small hole punch cutout for the camera you're getting thinner bezels all around the screen you're getting 120 hertz refresh rate which samsung has been having on their more like overall neutral model i won't i'm definitely not going to say entry level again because i've made the mistake to say to do so in the past on the s23 plus and this by far is not entry level it has a high price tag and has flagship components but like I said, in comparison to the S24 Ultra, you're just not losing value, not so much. If anything, this is fantastic, and the S24 Ultra is fantastic, and then some. And that's just what I love about Samsung. That's just fight me, argue with me in the comments. I would love to see it, but that's just what I think. So in conclusion, the S24 Plus has to be maybe one of the best phones on the market at the moment. I gotta be honest. I, I had a prediction last year when I reviewed the S23 Plus that the S24 Plus was gonna be better, but I also had a feeling that it was gonna become my new favorite Android smartphone, and it has, it genuinely has. It is my favorite Samsung smartphone, and it also is my favorite Android smartphone. I just love it. I guess it's just, this is, to me, this is the definition of the perfect smartphone on the market at the moment. It has the right amount of heft, and weight to it. It is the right thickness. It has the right build. It is performant. It has all of the specs that I would love to see in a phone. It has 120 hertz refresh rate, triple camera setup. It has a beautiful 1440p display, super bright. It gets super colorful and vibrant. It has USB-C fast charging. Now this thing juices up super fast in probably like an hour or even less than an hour, it juices up the whole phone. And the battery life is fantastic. It actually holds up to a full 24 hours. So sometimes you can even stretch it like in a day. You're obviously not gonna be spending the whole day on your phone. But keep in mind, you're also sleeping eight hours out of those. Some of you less, some of us more. Not really the point. The point is you are allocating a certain time of the day to sleep. So I'd say you'd be using this for the two thirds of the day. And I gotta be honest, guys, you can really go for like, two days with this phone if you go for light to medium usage I, that's what i typically do light to medium usage so over overall on and all i gotta be honest this is potentially my favorite smartphone of 2024 potentially one of the best ones also from 2024 We'll have to wait and see what the other companies come out later in the year. Obviously, it's just the beginning of the year and Samsung always drops their phone at the beginning of the year. We have the iPhone 16, 16 Pro coming all the way later in December. We also have the Pixel. We also have some more updates. I think in the summer, we're going to be getting a new lineup of the Flip and the Fold. We're going to have to wait and see. But that being said, let me know what you think of the S24 Plus. This has to be, like I said, my favorite phone 
it's right now it's my recommendation 100 percent let me know what you think are you picking this up are you more of an s24 ultra kind of person all that being said thank you so much for watching the video i will see you guys on the next one very shortly i have so much content to work on and i'm honestly really excited to do so so as always i wish you the best of luck in everything you do and i'll catch you guys on the next one deuces